Stay tuned until the end of this episode. Oh, I'll talk through the end of this episode. Stay tuned until the end of this episode. I'll talk through this 12 minute AMRAP with you and give you some strategy for how to work around a high, technically difficult movement. <laughs> Three, six, down. On this week's Throwdown, we have two named Tyler and Jelly Bean Jeanette demo the workout. We've got bar muscle ups, power snatches, and handstand walking with a twist. And you already know we release these workouts right here on YouTube every Thursday at 1 p.m. This week's Throwdown is a 12 minute AMRAP. Starts with four bar muscle ups, 12 power snatches, 75 pounds for the guys, 55 pounds for the girls, and then a 20 foot handstand walk with two pirouettes included. You know you want to get on the leaderboard. If you want to, go in the description down below. Do something over there. Let's redo this port. No, no, just yes. keep it going. Keep it you going. You know you want to if you yeah. want to. <laughs> you know you want to get on the leaderboard. Look in the description down below. There you'll find a link. Click it. Register, please. On these throwdowns, we practice practice qualifier style workouts. We're also doing a competition, which would be multiple workouts at the end of December called The Winter Is Coming, and it's coming. This week we have two new demos for you, Tyler and Jeanette. Tyler is an RX level athlete and Jeanette is an as aspiring, aspiring? Aspirin? As she's an aspirin <laughs> uh, semi-final athlete. God, I'm gonna need to take an aspirin after all these things. watch this one. <laughs> work out. Three, two, one, zero. Uh, I was waiting, <laughs> it's gonna break the silence. A fun workout with a new standard. Yeah, this is pretty straightforward. Starts with four muscle ups and 12 power snatches, pretty lightweight. And I think for most people that are at a competitive level, that'll probably start unbroken. And then that's where the fun begins. <laughs> yeah. But keep in mind, we've had power snatches that are 75, 55 in the open, and it was not easy because yeah. it was so grip limited. Yeah. yeah. This is probably a little different, but it's still, any weight can get challenging when you're trying to move fast. Yeah, that was interesting to see that Jason Tyler. Jason yes. Tyler. <laughs> Jason decided to break it up there. I would have um, broken it up, I think. Do you think break it up for grip or? Well, I think shoulders also. I mean, this is your overhead on every movement, basically. Um, I really like breaking light power snatches because the bar has to go back down to the ground anyways. So, And you don't, it's not hard to set up for it, so. I feel like we gotta talk yeah, about the fact do. that she's doing yep. pirouettes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is a standard you came up with me. It's a 20 foot handstand walk, but it requires two 180 degree turns on the side. So you start in the middle, walk five feet, pirouette, walk back five feet, and then you can keep going all the way to the line and pirouette, but it's essentially two unbroken sets of 10 feet with a pirouette that are required. Correct, so think of the middle line as like safe. Yeah. So once you get back to the middle line, you can come down and it's really two reps. Yeah. That's your base when you're playing tag as a child. <laughs> exactly. Essentially. Yes. They yes. both did that unbroken and looked pretty smooth, looked pretty easy. I'm guessing that it probably won't be that way for most people yeah, if they I mean, don't practice it. And as Mia mentioned, this will be pretty shoulder intensive. The bar muscle up requires some of that, power snatch you're going overhead. So by round two or three, I think it's gonna be much more challenging to be able to turn and do, move quickly enough that there's not a ton of time under tension where you just blow up yeah, with your it's, shoulders. It's 20 feet, which is a pretty short handstand walk. I mean, we usually see 25 foot segments, but I think that turnaround would add like three to five feet worth of time, yeah. especially yeah. if you're not good at a true pirouette. Yeah which is like the three-step turn. I think that this is actually more of a test of handstand skill versus a 20-foot segment because I feel like I would get into a bad position and walk fast in 20 feet just to get it over with, but I have to stay a little bit more stacked and in control to make sure that I don't have so much momentum if I need to turn around. So this really is like, it's almost like a training tool to help you with a freestanding handstand in a four-foot box and just being in control while you're upside down in good positions. And you'll see round two, she's already breaking it up. There's a lot of risk into going unbroken on this. Yeah. And the standard is um, just gonna ask for that. the turn, you have to cross the line completely and then it doesn't matter how you turn. Okay. But both hands need to cross the line before you complete your turn. Yeah, you can okay. see she actually came back across the line once she crossed, right. which probably makes sense, right? It's almost reducing the amount of feet that you're walking instead of going like looping around the line and adding two or three extra feet. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think too, I mean, this we didn't create a standard on it, but if you did do something like this in a co competition setting, you'd probably have a lane that you had to yeah. stay in. Yeah. And I would think that some people are gonna wanna keep one hand pivoted and really swing the other one way around, which might potentially put you out of the lane. Yeah, that would be the way, I was just envisioning what I would do and I would try that first. I yeah. think that'd be the fastest, but also like you mentioned, you could start bubbling around and getting out of your lane. Yeah. So what I was, would do the three-point pirouette that Myra taught me. Yeah, this is uh, this. I wrote, like, Myra, Mia, I wrote this workout for you. She wrote the step-up <laughs> workout, and now she's writing yeah. like she does like eight hours of handstand technique work every, every week. week. <laughs> <laughs> we know Mia's biases, yeah. right? You know, away. like three weeks ago, before she wrote the workout, she was in there practicing this, and I was wondering what she was doing. Now I understand. She's <laughs> training for, <laughs> for the record. Workout. I've been practicing this for like a year and a half, so it's not. Not new. Okay, so as they're going through this, it looks like the barbell cycling potentially could be the most lost time for Tyler. Um, where do you think most people's time is gonna be lost on this? It seems like it could potentially just be in the technique of the turnaround, but there also is a lot of rest time built into the other gymnastics. Yeah, I would guess that most people, if we're looking at like the bell curve, they're gonna be in the hands, they're gonna slow down in the handstand walk. Yeah. If you're good at the handstand walk though, it can become a bottleneck on the other movements because you're getting back to the bar muscle ups a little bit faster than maybe the average person or 12 power snatches, if you do five or six rounds, that's a ton of reps. So you gotta keep that in mind. Yeah, would you rather, so if you were coaching Tyler on this in the future, would you say just do the snatches unbroken and then get here and rest before you have to go? I would still tell him to break up, just okay. based off of, you know, Mia would probably know a little bit more since Mia has coached him, but just looking at him and watching him work out in the past, I think for him, his problem is, is once he blows up, it's really like that. It's yeah. really hard to control his body lines. Mm -hmm. So staying at 6'6 six, six or even 4'4'4 four, four, four on the power snatch with shorter rest times will allow him to be able to be a little bit more functional when it comes to handstand walk. Yeah. Was that the first fall that we've seen? In yeah. The yeah. And so this I mean, is where time could definitely be lost, without a doubt. For sure. Oh, yeah, because yeah, you, I mean, you have to, it's not something that you can just like do again. You have to rest <laughs> and make sure that you are ready or else yeah. you're going to fall into handstand turn yeah, with purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> with all of the movements that are required to be unbroken, so like if you have a workout where it's unbroken double unders or an unbroken set of snatch or whatever it may be, there's always that inherent risk. And once you fail one set, I think psychologically, it's really like a, you know, you're, you're screwed. And then also just like the overall fatigue, the true fatigue of having to redo something while someone else is racing out in front of you is really yeah. hard. Yeah, so he just had his second miss there. It was actually good. He, he missed the first one and didn't take that long of a rest and hit the second one, which was a good bounce back but I think just the urgency to go made him fall again and I think that can be a lesson for people is if this skill isn't good you're almost better off resting and making sure that you hit it versus taking the risk until maybe you're at like the nine or ten minute more point in the workout where you kind of have to rush but you know he's had three misses now in this one turnaround uh, which is a lot of time lost. Yeah, if you actually calculate all the time, it's probably 20 or 30 seconds every miss, which per is- Per time, a, right? Yeah, per, per yeah. time. And so over a course of a 12 minute workout, if it's 90 seconds or something like that, that's a, that's a big chunk. Were you happy when the people started breaking down in this? No, <laughs> I'd be happy. Because you know, your torture was working? <laughs> I don't think this workout is torture. No, I think no, it's I fun. Think so. it it's is fun. something Last week was probably much more torturous <laughs> for everyone, yeah. and the week before. <laughs> True. I do like that we're adding this in, and, and people that have followed the throwdown have noticed that every once in a while we'll add a new skill, and I think it's just good in this sport because it is constantly varied yeah. to try new things. You know, that, that the sport that we play always has new things in the open or in qualifier, yeah. so learning how to think on your feet yeah, really we, makes sense. We had the pogo burpees, the single dumbbell step over, the handstand pirouettes, basically three weeks of learning to adapt to a new training stimulus. It's yeah. kind of the same stuff you're always doing. I mean, it's handstand walking, step overs, and burpees, which is all familiar, but a little bit of a different twist on it. Like they did in the, uh, in the last chance qualifier, they did that 12 inch burpee standard mm -hmm. where you're burping next to a wall and jumping up and tagging it. I think it's good for off season time um, or even really in open season to get ready to try to go at max effort with something you haven't practiced because the sport 
almost tries to catch you off guard. Yeah, and Max, you alluded to this earlier, but if, you're, if you learn how to do something like this, you're gonna be better at the more simple movements, like just a regular handstand walk. Yeah. So this can actually help you with the things that are tested more often. Yeah, it gets you out of kind of that automatic mind. You, you don't think about like, if you're doing handstand walks all the time and it's always 25 foot segments with a turnaround, you're always kicking up with the same leg, always taking the same number of steps. So changes like this, they add variability, which forces you to kind of learn again. They keep things fun. And then I think also they prevent you from just like pattern overload issues of getting like too stuck in your ways of doing things. And I think it's good for athletes to deal with sometimes being bad at things and overcoming that. Oh, then I'm crushing it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that I do. Are you, are you overcoming them? No. <laughs> you can see now that the rest breaks have really extended compared to the first and second round. Yeah. Tyler took probably like a 15 or 20 second break between that set of four snatches, which is you know just too long with the 75 pound barbell. But I know that in his head, he's thinking, I have to do the handstand walk next. Yeah, so what's the point really of pushing it if you know right. you're getting to a movement that you're gonna have to calm yourself down for? I think this is a... This is not the workout to expect to be linear on for most people. For yes. sure. Yeah, the skill's gonna break down. And also too, the pairing of movements is kind of sneaky. You're doing a muscle up, which is definitely gonna challenge midline through kind of that hollow arch sequence. You're doing a power snatch, which is forcing you to hinge over. So you're using your midline a lot and your shoulders a lot. Then when you have to be in a position where your midline in order to do this well is gonna have to be stacked, that is getting fatigued as you're starting to have to breathe heavy. So I think this little skill challenge is basically getting harder and harder and harder and harder as you get even just a little bit more fatigue in the system. So Mia, just a technical question. Would you suggest learning how to turn on both sides? So in other words, turn your left arm, turn your right arm, or just stick to one side in a workout like this? Um, so I can't turn right upside down. <laughs> I can only turn left. Um, I'm sure that that's an imbalance issue. I'm stronger on whatever arm is planted when I turn that way. I, that's a question I would want to ask like a, a gymnast. Like, do yeah. they turn both ways or do they always turn one way? I would say for longevity right. sake, you practice your bad side, but for a competition like this, you default to whatever you feel like is going to work. Yeah. It, but probably from a movement perspective, you don't want one shoulder that is just really good at posting, supporting, and rotating. But again, maybe the creation of imbalances is one of the things that creates high level performance. Yeah. So. I'm sure some of that is true, but I have found that people that are good on both sides, usually they don't fall into that fatigue state as fast as someone that's always doing the same leg or same arm. Like the, the burpee is a perfect burpee example. Burpee step ups, yeah. Yeah, that that's can alternate. Yeah. They're super fast and efficient. I feel like that's more of a coordination thing, whereas this yeah. is actually a strength and balance. Oh yeah, right? this is definitely yeah. testing more than the step yeah. up on the burpee. <laughs> yeah. I wish it was that simple. Yeah, that same concept. All right, so a minute left in the workout. This is a frustrating workout to try to kick on because you like rush to then get to a movement that you can't really rush. Yeah. But we'll see yeah. kind of what the what the final kick looks like. I would say with a minute left, and Max, you mentioned this, but this is where you probably could take a couple risks. Now, if it's just a two-person workout and you're racing someone, then you know you're ahead, <laughs> maybe yeah. you don't. But in general, when a qualifier, you know that there are thousands of people on the leaderboard, you do have to take those risks every once in a while. It also depends what movement you're on. For like sure. for Jeanette here, I mean, this is one more rep, and she had, what, 30 seconds to get it in, yeah. so it probably was worth waiting to make sure she could hit it, and then she can yeah. um, sprint. There's you a can glare, see she's so looking, really yeah, yeah, she's looking at the clock. It's down here, too. Oh. <laughs> I think, yeah. <laughs> Good <laughs> job, Mia. Yeah, it, uh, basically it seems like if you're at the point that you're finishing up the muscle-ups, a hasty transition to the bar and crushing those would be good, but pretty much everywhere else in the workout is just gonna be operating at the same tempo. Yeah, really good finish though for Jeanette. Good job, guys. Let's go to the whiteboard. All right, my friends, what we watched in that demo, the best score was Jeanette. She hit six rounds plus three bar muscle-ups. Now, if we look at that total volume, that means she did 27 bar muscle-ups in that 12-minute AMRAP period. She also did 72 total power snatches. So it's not an insignificant amount of other volume of stuff, and you can't put just your full focus on that handstand walk with a pirouette in it. I think some people will look at that and they'll be overly consumed with that one movement in there, but knowing that there's all this other work that's in there that can potentially compound the difficulty of this handstand walk is something to take into consideration as 
an elite athlete approach, approaching this workout. Now, if you're not an elite athlete approaching the workout, it's gonna be a little bit different, but I'll start with the assumption that you can do all of the movements. You can do bar muscle ups and you can turn around on your hands. So if you can do all the movements for the muscle ups, my recommendation would be to split it up in terms of priorities. And priority number one would be only if you can do all of the other priorities. So priority number three is transition speed. If you are gonna focus on moving really fast to the bar muscle ups, that means that you should be able to take quick breaks if you do need to break, or be able to do the muscle ups unbroken. Having that mindset of saying like, okay, well, my bar muscle ups, if I do that much volume, four is an unrealistic amount for me, I'm gonna have to take a break. If you know you're not gonna be able to meet priority number one, then your next priority would be, okay, make sure that those breaks are quick. If you know you're gonna be able to do two, quick break two, then you can focus on priority number three, being the transition really quick to that first set of two bar muscle ups. Now, that's all gonna have to be individually decided by you based on how good you are at bar muscle ups. After the muscle ups, we have power snatches. For that, it's a pretty low barrier to entry weight, and this is something that commonly comes up in qualifiers, so it should be something that you're prepared for. I think for everybody, fast movement would be priority number one. When you do the snatches, try to keep the cycle rate pretty quick, and then if you are gonna take breaks, try to make them as quick as possible. Now we watched Tyler in the workout. He seemed to get he was conservative in the front end and he took a couple of breaks. I think he took two breaks in that first set of power snatches. Those breaks as he got deeper in the workout were longer and we don't necessarily know if that was suboptimal planning or not because he might actually need those longer breaks to make it more likely that he could hit these handstand walks with the turnaround. So how you navigate those power snatches is gonna be dictated by how confident you are in both the muscle ups and the handstand walks. So move fast, but break it relative to what you need to do to make sure that the handstand walk is gonna be as limiting of a fatigue thing for you as possible. So priority number one for the handstand walks would be no misses. Try to approach it knowing that each attempt that you do is gonna count. We saw that Tyler missed a couple of times and each one of those is like 20 or 30 seconds. So you're eating away into like 5% of your total working time every time you go to attempt one and fall. So your first goal would be make sure that you are ready and confident and think that you could make each one. If you are confident with that, the next priority would be to do them unbroken. We saw Jeanette do that where she would walk walk five feet, turn around, walk 10 feet, turn around, walk five feet. I think Tyler also did that in the first and maybe the second round, but that would be the next priority. And then the last priority would be fast transitions. So if you are confident knowing, okay, I could push the pace on this, I feel comfortable walking on my hands, turning around on my hands, I'm not gonna miss, I'm gonna be able to push the pace between it, then you transition really quickly from the power snatch to that handstand walk. So each movement kind of has its own little checklist that you would go through relative to where your fitness is and where your skill set is. When you're looking at how you are going to complete this, if you know that you're going to kind of compete with that six plus rounds, you know that your gymnastics has to be pretty good and that you've already done 24 total muscle ups, a bunch of power snatches, and you've already walked 120 feet on your hands while turning around 12 times because each one of the handstand walks requires a turnaround at both ends of that 10 feet lane. So it can be a lot of work for people that feel comfortable with these advanced gymnastics skills. If you are not somebody with those gymnastics skills, so you feel like you're more of an intermediate or RX athlete that's developing this, there's a ton of ways that you could scale this workout to get a similar stimulus. We have the option that's in the description where you can do bar muscle ups, power snatches, and wall walks. You have an option that you could do bar muscle ups, power snatches, and handstand walk with no turnaround, where it's just a 20 foot segment. You have the option where you can change these bar muscle ups to be chest to bars, which would potentially be a little bit more volume and keep everything else the same. So a lot of this is gonna depend on what type of a stimulus you wanna get and what you your issue specifically with this is. If you feel pretty confident hanging from the bar, maybe you don't need to adjust this, but you don't feel as confident on your hands, so you adjust this. We gave you some options in the description if you wanna play with different scaling or modifying 
modifying this specific workout to fit your athletic needs. I think that's everything I got for elite athletes and how I would think about this for people that are trying to figure out how to navigate this high skill movement type workout and some scaling options below in the description. Have a great workout. I'll see you next week on The Throwdown. It's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Pata in this thing, man. Hey, look, man, thank y'all for watching Train Think Tank YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel, you know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button. Let it be known, let it be known, let it be known, you know what I'm saying? Pata.